Welcome to this Autodesk Factor Design Suite Tech Tip provided by Imaginet Technologies. This tech tip is going to focus on the process of using a PDF file as the floor plan for your factory layout. I was working with a client the other day and they mentioned the fact that they don't have a two-dimensional AutoCAD drawing to use as the basis of their factory layout. The only thing they had was a PDF file that someone had sent them. And I got to thinking that you can actually use the PDF file as the basis for your factory layout. Well, the first thing I want to do is I have the uh, PDF file open and I'm going to export it to a graphic format that I can use inside of Inventor. For this example I'm going to use the PNG file. Now I've opened up my Inventor application and we're going to create a new part. We're going to base this part on the standard inch based part template. We're then going to insert the image that we just created. Now for this example, I'm going to choose not to link to the image. I actually want to embed the image into my new part file. Once the image is in place, I want to center it at the zero point. And to do that, I'm just going to add a vertical constraint and a horizontal constraint between the image and the center point of my file. The next thing I want to do is get the image to full scale. Now the first thing I want to do for that process is to create a numeric parameter called scale. This parameter will set to a unitless value of 1. Then I'm going to add a dimension to the side of my image. And whatever the default value for the image is, I'm going to multiply that times the scale parameter. Now in this particular image, I'm going to zoom up to the title block. And I can actually see that the scale for the drawing is 1 eighth of an inch equals a foot. Now I'd ask myself how many eighths of an inch are there in a foot. Well, there's 96 eighths of an inch in a foot. So I want to go back to my parameter flyout and I'm going to change our scale factor from 1 to 96. This should give me an approximation of a full scale design. Now I can zoom in and test that. Uh, I'm going to make an assumption that the wall thickness for this design is about 6 inches. So I'm just going to take two points and carefully place them near the center of the walls and then I'll just dimension those and let you see that we are right about six inches. Now for this example, I'm going to draw rectangles that represent the basic outline of the building. I'm not going to be very precise for this example, but I do want to make it close to what's displayed in the drawing. I'm then going to extrude these profiles and for this example I'm going to extrude these one inch in the downwards direction. I'll click OK and there I have the part that I'll use as the basis of my floor plan. Now in the browser I'm going to turn on the visibility of the sketch we just used and under the create panel I'm going to select the decal command. I'll pick the image and then the face at the top of our part. I'll click OK and then I'll turn the visibility off of the shared sketch. Now here you can see our floor plan on the top of the component we just created. I've jumped ahead in the process a little bit and started a new factory layout. Now the first thing I want to add to this assembly is the part that we just created. And to do that, I'm going to go to the Assemble tab and click the Place Component tool. I'll select the PDF floor file we created earlier and click Open. Now this part will appear centered at the zero point, just like we had it positioned in the original part file. Here you can see the PDF file we're going to use as the basis of our factory floor plan. Now I can zoom in and actually begin the process of laying out my factory data on top of the PDF design. 
Now this is not a factory layout, it's actually a hotel conference room, but I hope you understand that the process is the same. I'm going to go into my architectural assets, into my structural area, and I'm just going to bring in a simple wall. We'll drop this in place, and you can see that I can zoom up. Now I can't snap to these particular components, but I can get pretty close. Once I place the wall, I can select it, and I think in this case we need about 790 inches. I'll get it up to the approximate location and then drop it off. You can use your other assets as well. For this example, I'm going to lay out a typical conference room. I'm going to drag in uh, a simple little table and a couple of chairs. Now as you can see I've jumped ahead in the process again and I'm going to finish off my design by inserting one of the my photorealistic people here. We'll go ahead and position him up. And here we can see my layout in the context of the PDF file we're using as the floor plan. Now I also want to go over the process of generating a drawing view where you're using a PDF file as the floor plan. You actually have a nice benefit by using a PDF file. I'm going to start the base view and I'll set my proper orientation and the proper scale for this drawing. Now for this example I'm going to choose to drop a shaded view. I'll click OK to drop the initial view and of course it's far too big for my drawing sheet. Well that's okay. I can use the crop command to crop the view and I'll place the cropped view onto my drawing sheet. As you can see in the shaded view you actually get the benefit of seeing the PDF lines along with your 3D components that you generated with the Autodesk Factory Design Suite. I'll finish up this tech tip by showing you that you can generate an isometric view showing your design in three dimensions along with the PDF file we used as the floor plan. I will finish up by dropping in uh, a parts list and the balloons for this particular drawing.